Hey guys, welcome back. It's June 9th and it's a Thursday and I think today I forgot how to day trade. No matter what I did today, it just did not work. I'm actually ending the day red. Luckily, it's not super bad, but um, at the same time, it's super stressful because there was there was decent opportunity today. It wasn't like the cleanest action. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was, but I just could not trade it. I really don't know what it was. Every time I made a profit, I would give it right back again. I dug myself in a big hole. I got back out of the hole, so on and so forth. Um, so it's going to be kind of an interesting little recap here. AUVI, I, I, I don't even know what to say right now. Um, I had a lot of trades today, um, 336 fills. That's obviously not the amount of trades. I had like um, 26 trades or 27 trades. Um, I'm down $91. So it's a total scratch day again, just like yesterday. But here, let me show you this. This is actually really cool because... Um, where are we at right here? So TD Ameritrade, they are actually uploading trades in real time right now. You can see my last trade was at 10.09. This was not always the case on the transactions page. Um, so right now I could go ahead and upload my page and actually share you guys in real time my trades on Trade Journal. So that was not always the case. Super happy they came out with that or they're you know doing it a little bit earlier now. I never really understood why it took so long for them to upload their transactions. It used to be basically the next day at like 4 or 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I could then import my transactions. Now it's instant. Like the second I make a trade, I can see it in the transaction summary, which is super, super cool. Let me actually just change my screen right here. I think this is a little bit of a better view um, for this. So in my day trading momentum account, which any of you guys could check out, just go to tradejournal.co forward slash Winkler and check out my day trading Momo account. Just go here to uh, not owner actions, but uh, the calendar page. And actually, let's open up running calendar as well. And you could see, um, you know, I was on a little bit of a green streak. Um, yesterday, I gave, I ended that green streak with a $13 red day, and then today, a $100 red day. Um, but it's been pretty good. You know, we had $620 profit here, um, small profits here, but then we had a $1,200 day. So it's been overall pretty nice. I just... Man, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, you know, today I slept really horribly, or last night I slept really horribly. I had a really stuffy nose and I couldn't breathe, and I woke up like a dozen times last night. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't really want to blame it, but at the same time, your life influences your trading so directly. I mean, there's like a perfect correlation, um, positive correlation, when it comes to like if you're hungover, if you're tired, if you're sick if you're agitated, whatever, that instant, like directly influences your trading. So I think today, I never really felt 100%, and I think maybe that's why I wasn't able to get green. I don't know, I, I could think about it forever and um, probably come up with a many different uh, reasons. But look at this running p and I wanted to show you guys. So uh, yeah, yesterday was a lot of back and forth. Um, I thought it was like a lot more than this. I remember, you know, there was many trades where it was just back and forth. I think sometimes right here on the fence, it's really hard to tell, but there, there, there was many trades like right on the fence where I was just green, red, green, red, green, red. Um, and today I just couldn't get green. I was green for like, nope, I was actually never green. Take that back. I was never green today. And I dug myself into a pretty nice little hole here, 477. So I was almost down $500. I crawled back out of that hole. And then I was like, you know, you know, less than $100 down the day, I was like, I should probably go ahead and call it here because I feel like the more I trade today, the worse it gets. And whenever you have one of those like slight little bumps back to the, uh, back to, you know, break even, I've had that so many times where like, like just like this, where I have a bump back to break even, I take that next trade and whack, I'm right back down. And I'm like, oh, you know, I just spent so long like trying to get back even, um, I should have just went ahead and called it. Um, look at this day. I was up nicely and then gave back. That's also really annoying. It's really nice when you have those days where you just like trend higher and you end high. It doesn't always happen. And I don't necessarily want to end at the perfect high because that means I'm probably leaving profits on the table. What if the front side keeps on going? I should keep on trading that front side. So that's a really important thing to note. But enough about this. Let's go right to the trading screen. And for this, I actually want to, oh, sorry, a lot of things popping up here. I actually want to switch over to the trading screen. Um, layout again because I think it's a little bit easier for you guys to follow. Um, so really quickly, let's just scratch off W-E-J-O. Um, I'm, I'm, this is the one I'm really down on the most, but I was actually down on everything a lot. So I made it, I basically made back all my losses on everything except W-E-J-O. And this one just never gave an opportunity to make back your losses on. And I don't really care about making back losses on a specific ticker. I just want to trade the best ticker at the given time. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't looking at W-E-J-O uh, anymore. Once we broke VWAP and we were trending lower, I never even looked at this ticker again. It was off my radar. Um, done, nothing to say. Look at that five minute chart, it's disgusting. 
AUVI was really the ticker to talk about. So let's just go right over to this one. I'm up $6 on it, um, but I was down significantly on this one. Actually, we could even see specifically this ticker, AUVI, oh boy, where is that one? AU, you know what? We need a better filter for this now I think about it. I usually don't check um, the filters here on this page or the specific uh, filters. So yeah, on this ticker, I was up, 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 up 160 and then I gave it all back uh, in one trade. This was such an annoying trade in the middle of the day today uh, on AUVI, this was just so stressful. So yeah, let's go and talk about that. Um, first, let's get a bird's eye view of this ticker. So overall backside ticker, nothing too interesting. This is a daily chart uh, or a weekly, now it's a daily. Big resistance right around $3. This was the area I was worried about all day today. Um, building products company, 13 million shares outstanding, 40 million market cap. Okay, um, you know, pretty nice stats, especially the shares outstanding. So probably a float around uh, 10 million. So that's pretty nice. Um, so they're coming out with a bunch of catalysts today, looking pretty good. So I, I like to see it. everything's you know fanning out pretty perfectly in that regard. The thing is, this ticker isn't necessarily the first green day. It popped up here 175%. It's been pulling back for a little bit, and then it had another big move, 100% um, plus so far today. Uh, but it's really you know kind of stalling out here around that three dollar zone. This is what we were talking about in the daily chart. And pre market, I messed up on this ticker pretty pretty severely. And after that, I was down, this is like when I was down 477 or whatever it was. And I was thinking to myself, like, I can't really take on that much more risk. I do want to keep trading and kind of see if I can get back into a flow. And then I reduce my position size. So on very small position size, I actually was able to make my way back up. If I kept the same position size as before, yeah, maybe I could have had a green day. But at the same time, I would have been subjecting myself to a lot of risk and mentally, that's heavy because you just keep thinking like, oh, if this even goes down a little bit, um, I'm gonna inch my way towards my max stop on the day. And, and that really influences your trading. So I think reducing size, especially later in the day, but also if you're already red is, is a good idea. If you look for that Hail Mary to like make you green back on the day, that's that's a recipe for a disaster. And that's a recipe for you know hitting some serious max losses. So this ticker pops up right here, pretty nice, 46%. I missed this front side move, which was already kind of putting me on a bad side. I was like, oh, Okay, well, let me buy here. I try to trade it. Um, I th I think I basically get out for a break even, maybe a little bit of profit here, as you guys saw um, with my right here. So I made a little bit of profit, uh, but nothing really too interesting. And then it pulls back here and I'm like, okay, guys, let's go. I don't know why I was so ambitious here. I sized uh, in right here. Um, it was like a $4,000 position size. It, it's hard to say um, based on what you guys see. Actually, let's you know what, we could actually go ahead and look at that. So this was right around 909. Let's see, some of my bigger position sizes. Yeah, 3,000 shares. So one of my biggest, of course, look at this. My biggest loser was on my biggest share size. So yeah, I sized in 5,000 shares on this one. This was, this is really where I went Hail Mary mode. I went 5,000 shares here, ended up flushing on me. I cut my losses uh, and it, it keeps selling off. So if I didn't cut my losses here, it would have got worse, worse, and worse. Um, so the loss wasn't even that big, or you know, percentage-wise, it wasn't that big. I was just, I was, you know, long thirteen thousand dollars. So that was a pretty big size. You know, I, I was not anywhere near that size on my winners. Um, so you could just tell, like, I went for that Hail Mary. I was like, all right, let's go. Let me size up. This ticker is crawling up. Not to mention the volume was actually there too. But you know we haven't been getting good resolution on pullbacks um, so often, so it's it's still not really the market to be doing something like that. And I that's you know this is where I tripped over myself without a question. Um, then you know I went for a little red to green move here. Um, actually made you know it was a break even really. It wasn't really much profits. Um, and then we had a really clean five minute breakout here, and I was. I was frozen. I don't know why I didn't trade this. This was the best trade of the day right here. We had a nice five minute breakout. We had a good one minute pullback and then we popped so hard. I went in, bought here, got shaken out and then it rips again. And I'm like, this ticker just went 20, 30% and I didn't get any of that. So this was very stressful here. Um, then somehow I actually made some profits in this area and then um, a little bit of a profit here. But you know, this is where I really started sizing down. You can see here the cost of these trades were just you know a fraction of what my former trades were, um, which is fine. You know, you want to again focus on risk management at this point. But yeah, AUVI. I mean, exciting ticker. I just wish I could have done a little bit better on this one. I mean, the volume was there, the price action was there. Mentally, I was just not 
lot there and I really let this one slide by me and I think that's it's bothering me a little bit but hey you know I if, if you could just walk away with a small red day or a scratch day especially when you're not really feeling it um, for whatever reason I guess you can't complain so hard because if I ended the day down like you know four or five hundred or maybe had a max loss day at a thousand um, that would have been a little bit more annoying because then you go in the next day thinking like I, I should, you know I got to make back my losses which you don't want to think but you're gonna think that um, no matter how hard you try not to it's gonna be there a little bit and uh, you know if you're just down like one or two percent it doesn't really bother you so much so tomorrow it's gonna be a fresh slate unfortunately you know Fridays aren't really my best days but uh, hey if I can get green tomorrow I might just you know take those profits call it and uh, be happy um, with that uh, BJDX, the last ticker here, I'm up $29 on this one. I uh, really made back my losses on this one as well. Um, in terms of the daily, you can see this one also just selling off a little bit like AUVI. You know, big pop here on high relative volumes, so that's nice. But a lot of resistance around $2. And then, um, you know, this one's been stuck in this channel this whole time. So popped up here and then was channeling. So basically a stair stepper without the second gap so far. Um, a lot of choppy stuff. I think I could have done all right on this ticker. I just had a huge loss on it right here. It flushed. It was not able to hold VWAP and 9 EMA. I cut my losses into the flush, and then it does exactly what I thought it was going to do. Classic. So, yeah. Um, right ideas, just somehow always on the wrong side, or then finally not getting aggressive when I should be getting aggressive. Uh, somehow I made it my, my way out of this flush right here. <laughs> I bought into it, popped up, I closed it right away, and then it flushed. So I was like, whew, thank God, at least, you know, something I was able to escape from today. But, ah, uh, yeah, AUVI, what a beauty. Um, it is holding its highs really nicely, though. I would like to see a little bit more high relative volume today. Um, you know, this is a really critical spot for us to break above this 180-day SMA. And then if, if we could just keep crawling towards $4 or so, this could be an exciting ticker. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it a few more days. I mean, we've already seen it now three days. Um, but again, if we just maintain these highs, maybe even do a little bit of consolidation, this will definitely set up for that big breakout potential. No, nothing's guaranteed, and who knows, the company could be coming out with an offering or something like that and just totally crush it. But if this does hold the highs around 2.5, holds those areas, and then maybe you know preps for that for breakout, this could really be uh, a potential for, for continuation. All right, guys, that's all for me today. I will see you then first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, guys, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.